Thanks for joining us today on this program that is the introductory program for a new series that has been jointly produced by the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education and the Department of Natural Resources. This series, entitled Finding Missouri, Our History and Heritage, has been uh, in the making for several years now, and we've had lots of input from different historians. And uh, it's been a, a labor of love to develop a program that can be used effectively as an instructional tool in the classroom with students approximately uh, ages five or uh, eight to 13, grades five to uh, grade seven or eight. And we're going to talk a little bit today with some people that had input on producing the series and uh, give you, the teacher, some input as to how this series might be effectively used in the classroom to supplement uh, social studies curriculum and uh, we hope that you find our discussion here enlightening and also we hope that you and your students enjoy the series and, and I have with me today Jim Karpowitz who is producer of the video series he is uh, with the documentary group out of Columbia and he's had extensive uh, background and experience in producing uh, environmental and, and natural and history uh, uh, videos, educational videos. I also have with me Warren Solomon, who is the uh, educational consultant for social studies curriculum for the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. And then I have with me Karen Grace, and she is the preservation education coordinator for the historic preservation program with the Department of Natural Resources. And thanks for joining me here today. And uh, let's visit a little bit now about uh, why we decided to produce this series and what went into that effort. Uh, Jim, I guess I'd like to start with you in talking about, did this present any different challenges than your typical documentary video? Uh, well, any any time you're producing um, historical uh, documentaries, you can't just go out and shoot them. You're actually building the story, particularly in the units before the advent of photography. Um, when you're talking about Lewis and Clark or St. Genevieve, it's very difficult. It's easy to tell a story, but it's very difficult to visualize what things might have looked like in, at that time. So you have to rely on a variety of different techniques using calligraphy or maybe showing a historic site in a certain way that captures the mood of that period. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's, it's a little more labor intensive working with historical subject matter because you actually have to build it. You can't just go out and, and report on it as if it's a news story. How about the fact that we were producing this for kids instead of adults? Is that harder, easier? What's your feeling on that? Well, I I think producing for kids is easier because it's more fun and it allows you a little more freedom to kind of experiment with different techniques, different camera angles. Um, and it really, it, to me, it frees, frees you up to have a little freer sense of um, what might be interesting or not. I, I enjoy working with, with kids' subject matter. So, We'll get back into the format and how we develop that and some of the techniques that we've used there. Uh, to hold the viewers attention but first I'd like to talk with Warren a little about how we came up with the the subject matter the the topics mm -hmm. give us uh, a little background on the process we went through to come up with the topics and the numbers uh, of units that we were going to to share with the students well <clears throat> We've, we've been at this project for a long time, so Karen may want to add some things to yeah. what I, what I as, as best I remember them. But uh, what we were thinking in terms of was to have um, a certain a number of topics that would pretty much carry us through a, a good part of a school year. So we were we we were thinking maybe 15 topics or so approximately would be a good number of topics to have. Mm -hmm. We had a, a special advisory committee that included historians. And so uh, we had a mixture of historians and educators who uh, together we uh, reached a consensus on what we thought would be a very good set of topics. And uh, the topics that we have are also topics very parallel to things that teachers 
may well be teaching or could well be teaching in their in their social studies programs either if they're studying Missouri history or if they're studying United States history. Now I know that's one thing that uh, we realized uh, kind of in the middle of the project was we were focusing in our thinking and developing the series on seventh grade. Right. And uh, suddenly we got feedback from teachers saying hey this is something we really need earlier. Why is that and and do you think we were were successful in our attempt there to cover more than one grade? I think I think we were. Uh, I think probably some of the programs may be more appropriate for the older students uh, than than other ones. Mm -hmm. uh, if I'm recalling right, I think there was a program about Harry Truman that might fit a little bit better for the older older students. But mm -hmm. uh, the reason why the great interest at the elementary level there really were a couple reasons. One thing is is in social studies curriculum in a lot of um, states uh, in the country, often fourth grade is a grade that's allocated to state history. Mm -hmm. And so um, a lot of Missouri curricula uh, in, in school districts uh, have fourth grade as an area where Missouri history as a separate course mm -hmm. might, be, might be taught for maybe a semester or so. The other thing is, is that uh, fifth grade oftentimes they will teach United States history. And one way to make United States history a um, perhaps more meaningful to students in Missouri would be to say, well, let's look at these events from a Missouri perspective. And so as units are being taught, like in westward expansion in United States history, mm -hmm. we could look at what was Missouri's role in westward expansion quite nicely with a series like this. So Missouri doesn't have uh, a mandated curriculum, certainly, and it also doesn't really require state history at a specific grade level but we do have a set of standards that we are right. using for social study curriculum. Talk about a little bit about that and how this video might play into yeah. that. Yeah, we, we do have standards. We have, we have the Show Me Standards, which is, is we nicknamed the placemat because yeah. it, it's, it's about the right size. It, it, works. <laughs> it would work that for that Put that under your plate. And <laughs> that's right. Know what some we're some to people do. have gone to enough meetings that they can actually use this for their whole family. <laughs> so so that, that's, uh, and, and then we have the book of content specifications where we, for social studies, we say, well, uh, if we have a standard on pertaining to United States and world history, what does this mean at the various grade levels? And when teachers came in to work on the uh, content specifications uh, for uh, connected with our state assessment program, particularly at the fourth grade level, they did see that Missouri history could play a significant part in this. It's not that we're expecting students to have memorized a lot of details of Missouri history, but I would I would say really uh, that this series uh, would have a very uh, nice relationship to the kinds of things we would get into in our assessment uh, at the at both the fourth grade levels and and at the you know particularly if you apply it toward toward uh, United States history also at the eighth grade level. Now you've taken the time with a teacher's guide that we've developed to go along with the series to uh, identify uh, kind of an alignment of the units mm -hmm. with our social studies curriculum uh, it, within the standards. Mm -hmm. um, so that's going to help stu uh, teachers there to sure. identify what units might be used best in a particular curriculum of study. Well, as you, as you know, we don't have a, an official Missouri State curriculum, but right. uh, what we did do is we took each of the uh, program topics and said, uh, if you're teaching United States history, uh, for each each topic that we have for a program, what what unit in United States history might might this uh, particular topic be used with? And so there, and, and the topics, the, the units that we identified are commonly taught kinds of units that would be taught. For example, uh, if you're studying American history, you'll probably be studying about the Civil War. And Missouri's role in the Civil War is, is covered in one of the programs in, in, in the uh, Finding the Missouri series. Mm -hmm. So um, we show that relationship. And then also in the uh, teacher's guide, we do identify specific show me standards to which the series relates. Um, in fact, the um, whole idea of the video, in a sense, is to, to start encouraging kids to think of topics for research and to, to do research uh, related to Missouri history. And, and, and uh, the show me standards, particularly uh, when we look at the processes of thinking side of the placemat where we mm -hmm. have the four goal areas and standards underneath that, 
this series could be used uh, beautifully for stimulating the kind of thinking we're getting we would like to get into at the process standards and do you see this as being necessary for a teacher to start with unit one and go through it uh, within a particular grade or do you see that you could pull out units and fit that in where you see fit in your particular course of study at different grade levels I think it could use I, I think it could be used nicely both ways you could if you have a course the units do follow a uh, in a nice chronological pattern so if you're if you're t you know you could use it in that sense but if you're teaching like if you're teaching eighth grade and, and your focus is on a particular facet or period of, of United States history you would not necessarily use all of the programs in the particular series it's even conceivable that um, a high school teacher might say let me see that unit about Harry Truman Mm -hmm. That might be something we, we might be able to use even at the high school level uh, just to get kids thinking about him and to stimulate um, questions that they might want to raise that they could, could investigate. So yeah. I think you could do it. You could do it either by being very selective in terms of units you're teaching and what, which programs will you pull into those units. Or if, you're, if you do have a chronological course dealing with Missouri history, either at the elementary level or at the, at the uh, middle school, junior high level. You could use the series just as it's been developed. Karen, uh, your input into this, I think, has given us an interesting perspective. I think if, if we'd had just educators and historians produce this series, it might have been more of a, a PBS documentary format, more of a travelogue format, if you will. But the perspective that you brought uh, to the table and talking about how how to cover history and his, an historical perspective there was me, really looking at the built environment, not just looking at the events of history from a people standpoint. And that gave us a whole different avenue, if you will, to get into a lot of these topics. Uh, talk a little bit about why this is important that we connect with kids particularly uh, about their surroundings and how that might relate to the past? Well, I, I think I started from the perspective that all history is local history, meaning it happened in somebody's backyard. Okay. And in every town in, in Missouri, no matter what size town or rural or urban, whatever, uh, there are many places that, if, if studied, can help to tell uh, the story of Missouri's heritage and, and history. Uh, sometimes a great event might have happened in, in that building. Sometimes it was the everyday lives of people during a certain time period. Or maybe that particular uh, place in Missouri helps to illustrate some great theme uh, that involves many places. Uh, such as Route 66. Mm -hmm. There are many um, buildings along Route 66 that uh, tell us the story of the whole uh, era of automobile uh, travel and, and transportation during a certain time period. So th that was really my perspective and I uh, have long felt that these places are, are more than just little museum pieces, these mm -hmm. important historic places um, that they can be used as a tool for, for teaching and uh, for learning about our heritage in Missouri. And that's, that's been my focus through this whole project. And I think that's one point we want to make to teachers particularly is this isn't intended to be an all-encompassing overview of all the events and locations of historical significance in Missouri. There's just, we would have been at this <clears throat> eternally. Right? Right. There's that, that sense overwhelmed us early on, that there was so much to cover. How do you encapsulate this information in viewable lengths of programming? And for most kids, your attention span past 15 minutes is pretty limited. And, and it, most of us in general, you don't like to watch things of 
instructional or educational importance that don't entertain you. So we had this responsibility really is to try to connect people to the event we were discussing, or in some cases more than one event really are rolled into one topic, one unit, and locations. And I guess, Jim, that's where we ought to get into this whole, the whole key to the, the, the format approach. Uh, what were some of the things that went through your mind in looking at how we might <coughs> manage the business of in instructing the viewers, but at the same time keeping them entertained and interested in what was going on? Well, each of the videos, there's, there's sort of a loose format that runs through um, all of the videos. We really use the story or the anecdote as our basic kind of learning technique. It, each of the videos describes a period of history as a series of anecdotes. So basically we started with a location that our host could host from that would kind of tell part of the story mm -hmm. of that period of history we were discussing. We tried to concentrate on those areas uh, or those physical locations that people could actually visit. The old courthouse, Fort Osage, Wilson's Creek, places where um, children, families, or classrooms and their teachers could go and actually see a part of history. From there, we, we kind of expanded on the location and developed interesting stories to, um, to kind of complement that location. Uh, we didn't try to be comprehensive. There's quite a bit of information about Missouri history that's not in this video series, but we simply felt in order to do justice to the stories we were telling to concentrate on just a few things and try to make them interesting for a younger audience. Where did you have to go to get background information? Uh, was it the kind of thing where you could just check books out of the library and get background? Because I know the anecdotal perspective particularly, you've got a lot of kind of first-hand accounts that are integrated into the video that are taken from journals. Was mm -hmm. that kind of background information hard to come by? Well, it's not hard to come by, but it's essential. Anytime that you're involved in any kind of historic resource, you always want to go to a primary source, somebody that was there that actually experienced that. And so we use those primary sources a lot in this video. And hopefully, in some of the later units, um, the History Begins at Home unit that's based in Waynesville, where mm -hmm. we actually follow a class doing their own historical research, they'll be able to see how important primary sources are and how those can be utilized to get information about the past. But, but basically we did a lot of work with uh, various historical societies concerning um, archival images and that sort of thing. We learned early on, if you, if you get any two historians in, in the room together talking about a particular event in history, you can have a different interpretation of what went on and it was very hard I'm sure for you as a producer to say this is a piece of this is a factual bit of information that we're going to include in this video to stand as fact because like you say it happened in the past and it's real hard to put that to a primary source early in the process we had a uh, a group of historians historical advisors um, that were helping us all along in the process and though we had some interesting discussions on what should be in and what shouldn't be in I think that that process sort of winnowed out a lot of the you know, unimportant things and we kind of came up with some basic things that everyone could agree on so mm -hmm. it was sort of a consensus of a large group of people that that came up with these basic units that we have and really in a sense that's what took the greatest amount of time uh, the actual time of out in the field doing taping and, and the editing part didn't consume near as much time as the background research activities. No, that, that took forever also. Well, it did take it. Like it. Yeah, it felt like that. It felt like that. Uh, I guess uh, what I want to do now is we have a, a videotape that we're going to roll that shows a teacher using a unit in the classroom and then exploring with her students what they might do to spin off from that unit they watched at the class and turn it into a research project for themselves. 
So we'll look at that tape and then we'll come back and visit some more. Good morning. This morning I'm going to be showing you a video on uh, Arrow Rock and it's called Trails West, um, Finding Missouri, Our History and Heritage. So we're going to start with that and then when we get done we'll just ask some questions and think about it a little bit. considered a dim, forgotten thing, like a faded photograph. The events of the past lose their clarity, imperceptibly blurred with age. But there are places where history remains in sharp focus. Places... And what do you think of it? What did you get out of this video that maybe you hadn't learned before about Arrow Rock? Or if you've never been there, what did you get? <laughs> for what? For McDonald's or something? Okay. <laughs> I, I didn't know about the okay. Have you seen the Capitol before, where uh, George Caleb Bingham's paintings are all around? Yeah, I I know that he painted some, but I didn't know he painted them. So when I learned the events. If you'd never been to Arrow Rock before, which I think there's a few people who haven't, would it make you want to go there and check it out? It makes me want to go back. Because it's like, I see all these things that I didn't see when I was first down on the trip. And I, and I recognize some of the things like, you know, the gun shots and the tavern, but I didn't, like, some of the things they were familiar, and I was saying just like, oh, I didn't see that. So it would be nice to go back. Okay. Now, if you could do a video like this about our community, what would you want for it to show? The MKT trail. All right. Yeah. And this branch of the mall. So we've got, like, let's go one at a time. So we've got MKT, MKT trail, the older schools, the mall. All right. Uh, the, the, the columns that they have out on campus. Yeah, the columns. The, so the, the Civil War Cemetery. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which is where? Okay. It's all over by Osco behind us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's pretty interesting. Okay. So that Mizzou and that would really get at the Missouri heritage and history thing and the MKT trail. Can you think of anything else that would stick with their theme that they have for the videos? Maybe downtown if we showed certain parts of it. The courthouse. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. The courthouse. Okay. Where else in town or around Columbia would you make a video? Everything, because everything has, you know, some background to it or something. Even, even the mall has some background to it. Or something. I mean, everything. Even if it's just been here for a year, it has this feel like the ground it was laid on. Mm -hmm. You know, it could have been, you know, bought on. It could have been, you know, now the bloodshed. It could have been. It just, you know, just different things. And so everything has a history. You just kind of have to go back. So really, everything in Columbia is worth. Mm -hmm. You know, so for the, the older things that have, do have significance, like the courthouse and the oldest house and the cemetery, those, have, those would be like the top three things you would want to put on the tape. Do you think that the, the video that we're talking about would be, best be created by the whole group or breaking it up into smaller groups? Probably breaking it up because then you could get like a few people for one uh, basic idealism or something of Columbia and then have kind of separate little groups to make different videos and you can kind of piece it together into one big one or just make it like a series. Mm -hmm. yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to have like a little apartment for the day, you know, just like with a little group still kind of like that class. Yeah. Yeah. There's so many things to cover, so breaking it up into groups just, you know, just breaking up our group in the small yeah. group. Yeah. Gonna make it we should have found Mm -hmm. And it might get done faster because you're in smaller groups and there's just a lot of things to research. Yeah. You know, like, some person could, like, look at the history on, like, one and then, like, and then another group could look at, like, would you want to go there? Mm -hmm. And it does it and, like, make you want to go there. Sure. Stuff. Yeah, okay. like, one group could look at the MKD trail and then one group could videotape the zoo like 
the columns and mm-hmm. stuff. And you don't like that. Um, but wouldn't that be kind of a lot of groups? We'll probably have to make some decisions on what specifically we want to use after we um, get together in smaller groups. So we're making this videotape about Columbia and our history and heritage for the Missouri videotape series. And which part are you guys interested in doing on a tape? I'd like to do the columns and see what, the, what was that for, why they put it up there. Okay. The cemetery would be fun. The columns, the cemetery. Yes. Yes. Um, thank you, teacher. Well, how about if we pick one of these to focus on so that... Um, the other groups can work on one of the other places. Cemetery. Yeah. Cemetery? Okay. The, it's the easiest one? Yes. Yeah, All right. All right. First off, where is the cemetery? It's, it's, by, it's behind Grant. Uh, it's um, behind. And so how are we going to get there? When are we going to do this? By car. We're going to get there by car, the four of us. Um, okay. And when do you want to do it? So what are we going to do then? Um, like, it's like, it's, I, I, if I remember correctly, it's like splitting the parts, like there's like slave area and there's like confederate mm-hmm. and, yes. and, and they, they have like the part. generals and they have like the like guitar brothers or something like that. Oh yeah. All right. So, um, and there's even like two. so how are we going to figure out, you know, which area is which? Who has that kind of information? Um, I could probably figure it out. Like I could probably, like, couldn't, couldn't you ask the people that work there or something? Or, do we know the exact name of this cemetery? Mm-hmm. So how are we going to find it? Oh, it's... <laughs> well, do you think we can look it up in the phone book and find what sounds like the right address, maybe? All right, so can we can we think of anything else? Well, we know where it is, but what I'm talking about is how do we find out... Um, you know, first off, who even we should talk to, and then, you know, find out specifically like, where these locations are. Like the cemetery person that takes care of the cemetery moves the law. But how do we find them? Uh, go to their... Call the house. city. <laughs> Call the city? Yeah, city. Okay. Council or whatever. Okay. Do you think that maybe... Um, like one of the cemetery or not cemeteries, one of the mortuaries in town would know. Yeah, probably. Okay. Who yeah, that would be? Yeah. And the people who preserve the bodies and all this stuff. Yeah. Well, we can just call them and talk to them on the phone. Oh, yeah. I know. Some- how do we go about finding more information about this place and well, like, these maybe, people and stuff? Like, there's history, like, places around town, like, there's, like, information mm-hmm. stuff, centers. Mm-hmm. We could go down there if they have anything on them. Are you thinking of any places in particular? They have one down by Oscar Drugs, and it's, like, it's, like, like down the road a little bit. It, it's, over by Are you thinking of the Chamber of Commerce? Yeah, that, I don't mm-hmm. know that would have, but there's like places in town that I get okay. information and stuff. Last time I was at my mom's work, they had brochures about Columbia at the Boone Hospital. <laughs> they had at Boone Hospital, they had these brochures. Do you think it's going to say anything about the cemetery? Probably, because it has like history of even if uh, Even if we just went to the Chamber of Commerce or something and they uh-huh. didn't have them, uh-huh. I'm sure that they probably know about it. Okay, and direct us to the right people. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Should we call them first rather than going down there? Save some time? Yeah. Yeah, it's probably good. What about like uh, the Boone County Historical Society and those kind yeah. of places? Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Um, and have you been to campus before where they have the yeah. manuscript collection down in the basement of Ellis Library? Yeah. Because that's something we could check into too. Okay. Um, does anybody have a video camera? Yeah. So shoot it. All right. Are you willing to bring it? Probably. All right. Any other places you can think of where we might find information about the cemetery? Couldn't, uh, can we just like go to the Ellis and look up the cemetery? Mm-hmm. Do you think the newspapers would have anything about it? No. Well, yeah, it's like old, old newspaper. If we could like find maybe, like really yeah, old. Okay. Do you think like the Tribune would have that sort of mm, thing? On I don't file? know because if you think about it, the slaves—they're really old. 
and they might have not had newspapers back then. And then the union and Confederate in um, general, that might have. How did they report the news back during the Civil War? Ran around the <laughs> How do you want the video to look? Like, um, maybe we could, like, have, like, a host or something and, like, have them walk around and then other people could be, like, interviewed or something of what they think about the cemetery. And, um, once we find, like, the information, mm -hmm. um, they can tell a little um, about the history and stuff. And Who's then, they? Like, uh, the, okay. The, okay. like, the host will go around and say, what do you think, and ask questions. And then, um, like... Say I was the host, then you guys would like say, um, yeah, and you'd answer the question, mm -hmm. and you'd be like kind of like an interview. So you sort of want us to be the experts on the video of the information, or just say what we found in our research, or what do you have in mind? Like, um, like you know how like news reports go, they always like reporters they talk and then they interview people. Mm -hmm. Like, what do you think about this? Okay, so we'd have to go to other locations then to shoot that. All right. And let's think about our time and uh, budget constraints on this, like how we're going to pay for it if we need to and how much time we're willing to put into it. What are your feelings on that? Um, I guess that maybe you see how much money we have to put together um, somehow find a way to make more money. For <laughs> yeah. do, do we need to do that? Um, I think maybe because, like, Personally, I don't have much, and yeah, um, um, so if we made like if we like did a fundraiser or thing, mm -hmm. then we could get money, and then we could like put it all into yeah, this. Because this is a really fun. I mean, it's about like the money that we don't use. We could like get to charity. Or something. <laughs> um, do do we need to have money though? If we can provide the tapes and a camcorder. It just depends on if they if they if we have to pay to help get edited. Right. So. So we'll need to talk to Ron Rubin about that and yeah. see if we would be charged for that. We might see if the school would help us a little bit too, yeah, if we needed some money. Welcome back again, and let's pursue a little bit of discussion about uh, what we can do in the classroom as teachers to utilize this series. And I think you saw in the video that. Uh, the kids got pretty excited about producing their own video, going out and exploring uh, an event, a place in their community where uh, they could do some investigative research to find some information out about a locale and make their own video. And I guess that's really what our intention of the series was. Uh, you know, any of you disagree with me if, if you feel that you need to, but it seems like we really wanted to produce a series that was a, a catalyst to get students excited about exploring their own community's history and heritage. And, and not really, we didn't feel that we had uh, any need or even the ability to cover events of history and try to get all the chronology of the fact in there and the thing. Uh, let's talk about what we could do as teachers in the classroom to uh, spin off into some projects to do some things after using one of our units. Warren, what do you, do you have some ideas well, there? One thing is is that, that in, in a number of these programs, and perhaps all of them, that the narrator often will, will take you to a site to see something and then they'll say, why don't you check this out? Mm -hmm. there's a, there's a, there are a lot of opportunities here given for looking at different sites in the state of Missouri where there are uh, very good programs that, that uh, teachers could find out about and take advantage of and, and with the students generate questions that they would want to investigate. So I, I think that's just one of, of, of many different possibilities. Um, we also have in Missouri a, a very fine History Day program and um, this series would be a, a good good series to stimulate students into thinking about topics that they might investigate mm -hmm. for History Day where they would uh, prepare dramatizations or they might uh, do historical uh, written research projects or they might uh, make poster displays uh, of different kinds or, or projects that would be uh, done for uh, 
for the internet or, or, or something of this sort. I think they're really, um, I think I'm just sort of hitting the tip of the iceberg mm -hmm. when I'm making these particular suggestions. Karen, do you have other ideas? Uh, what are some things that you might suggest to teachers? Um, well, there, there are literally hundreds of different projects that could come out of this, this whole concept. Mm -hmm. One thing I've been working on recently with a, a teacher um, in a small town south of Kansas City, she uh, called me and asked if, if I could help her with doing a, a diorama of their courthouse square in this town. Mm -hmm. And um, so I volunteered to help and provided some photographs and some historical materials that we had in, in our office. And then they decided they wanted to do a very uh, detailed diorama and they wanted it to date to 1900 to the turn of the century, which meant that they had to <clears throat> research uh, not only the appearance of every building on the town square in 1900 so that they could reproduce it, but they also had to know what types of businesses were in the buildings and something about, you know, what those, those what kinds of services those businesses provided. Mm -hmm. uh, they had to know about their courthouse and exactly how it looked in 1900 so they could reproduce it. And so they're really learning a whole, uh, not only a, a commercial history of, of their small town, but they're also learning a, a political history in a sense. So that's been uh, kind of a, a little bit different project than anything we've, uh, we've seen in, in the video series. series. Mm -hmm. We've also had a, an archaeology project going on in Jefferson City. There's a building built in the 1870s, we think, and uh, the building is being extensively rehabilitated. It's been vacant for a long time, and as part of that rehabilitation, they had planned to uh, do some some pretty extensive earth moving in, in the backyard. So prior to that, um, a local um, class has been working with a professional archaeologist on our staff and doing um, an excavation and, and some testing in the backyard. The building had originally been used as a female academy, a school for girls. And so we're, we're finding some uh, indications of that in, in the rubble that's um, underground in, in that backyard. So that's, that's another way this whole thing can be used, this, this concept of discovering Missouri heritage and history. And it sounds like those projects can take on a life of their own and you really have to get involved with other teachers at other grade levels and, and right. other subject areas to right. keep that kind of project going because you really don't literally have enough time in, in one school year to follow through with it. Right. The students um, who are doing the archaeology project are uh, not only you know unearthing these these artifacts but uh, they're they're finding out what they are and and what they mean and uh, why they're in the location they're they're in and they're learning to curate them mm -hmm. uh, to clean them and care for them label them and uh, set up a little uh, museum display in a, a vacant room in their school so uh, there are a lot of things that are coming out of this what what would it first seem like a very simple project? What would your advice be to, at the local level, a teacher for getting in touch with people that can help them at the local level? Do you have a historical preservation society or organization at the town level, or is that something that's regional? Where could where can they get to get local help on where there might be buildings of historical significance mm -hmm. and, and how, what their involvement might be in interacting with a project like that? Well, our office has been collecting information on 
uh, cultural resources, the built environment, historic built environment above ground and and below ground uh, for about 30 years now. So we have information on about 200,000 uh, historic properties all over the state. And so they they can get in touch with us and, mm -hmm. and if we don't have the information we can sometimes help them find it. Mm -hmm. um, some towns and some counties have their own historical societies and the the way you find out information about those um, if you live in the town and you don't know who belongs to the historical society you can call um, the historical society at the University of Missouri and Columbia and they have a, put out a little booklet that's updated I know every couple of years I think um, that has a list the person uh, the contact person for each historical society mm -hmm. in the state of Missouri and um, tells you how to contact that person every historical society has some sort of a, a collection um, pertaining to you know either the, the city or the county that they cover so that's that's an excellent source and um, uh, you can also find um, newspaper clippings and maps and um, diff lots of different things um, in at the University of Missouri at Columbia at the um, historical society there do most universities have at, at least a library where you could go find lots of information about the past. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. There's, I'm sure there are a lot of restrictions about what you can walk out the door with, but you could certainly go there and utilize some of their information in terms of doing background research. Right. Jim, let's talk a little bit about advice you might have for a teacher who's wanting to put together a video, because I could see where in, in regard to any of the ideas that uh, uh, Karen was talking about, you'd want to document mm -hmm. what went on, the whole activity of discovery that you went through and that process. That can be an overwhelming task for someone that's never put the video together. It's not just turning the camera on. What are some things, some pointers you could give to teachers to keep in mind when they're pulling a video together? Well. Uh making a video is just telling a story only you're doing it with pictures so basically when when you're planning on your your local video the first thing you want to do is establish what story you're going to tell um, after you establish what story you're going to tell and I would interject too history is everywhere in Missouri no matter what city or state in Missouri, city or county in Missouri you're from something significant happened there at some point in time and something that's going to get the kids excited um, there's lots of opportunities for kind of exploration and discovery no matter where in the state you are so their stories are out there once you get a hold of your story basically write the script um, you can you can write a script um, as a voiceover narration, or you can um, go out and interview older local residents that might have some knowledge of whatever you're talking about. Mm -hmm. But basically, you want to put your story together. And then the challenge is, as it is in any historical video piece, is covering whatever that script that you wrote is with visuals. Mm -hmm. um, and and that might be the challenge, but but you're, you'll have the advantage your students are not only going to learn a lot about history they might learn something about video production as well so you'll be killing two birds with one stone what about length uh, the, the problem with any of this as we got into it was where do you stop telling the story do you have any feeling for that I think the kids I think the kids tell you to stop at about 12 minutes you know I think you'll I, I'm, I'm assuming teachers know that that um, you know there's sort of a fidget factor that comes with a certain amount of watching a video and I think 12 minutes is a, certainly as long as we felt we could go some of them might go a little bit longer but 10 to 12 minutes seems about standard to, to hold somebody's attention and of course you know I mean Ken Burns is currently working on a series on jazz that I think is 14 hours or 21 hours something um, it's a big subject and it deserves to be told but I'm not sure that that length would be appropriate for school age kids so I would say keep it short keep it fun have a ball and a lot has to do with your 
video production resources too. If, if you can't do anything to carry the imagery in an entertaining way, then you may not want to go too long either. If it's if it's just straight video and you can't use any graphics or special effects. Yeah, video is kind of a hard thing because there's a lot of things involved. There's there's visuals and audio, but one of the final units in the, in this series, we concentrate on some students in. Waynesville with a program called History Begins at Home and they do a variety of different things. They do historical research at, a, at the county court, um, they do a radio program, they do a little newspaper, they also do videos. So you're really not limited by technology, all you're limited by is, is your energy and the energy of your students because there's a whole variety of different projects that you could get into to pursue this advocation. Warren, we're talking about really opening the window of discovery I think is, is how you put it earlier on and uh, can can you use these videos in a, in a standalone sense where uh, they'll they'll teach history or uh, they'll have their, their content is, is part of the context there of the his, history lesson or is it is it really something where you've got to do something else with it I think it's more where you do need to do something else with it. They, for the most part, uh, the programs do tell a story, but at the same time, uh, they don't attempt to tell the entire story. Mm -hmm. And you can always look at uh, things from different perspectives, and and, and look and, and try to get deeper into it than than the series than the videos were able to do. And so the the intent was really to be a springboard for for more inquiry and investigation. So. I think they do a very good job of that, really. But they they will not attempt to tell the the entire story. To do that, you'd have to go to a Ken Burns type of thing, where you and then probably have to have some commercials sprinkled throughout it. So for the fidget factor, as far as that's concerned. But I mean, I think really uh, these are really very good programs to serve as a stimulus for further investigation. Warren, visit with us for a minute to the fact that the videos themselves show kids engaged in activities that are discovering their own history and heritage at home. So it's it's not necessarily that you would have to go out and do it on your own. You could actually uh, engage some instructional activities by having the students uh, mm -hmm. look at what's being done within a particular unit and, and, and talking about that. Sure. Several of the videos actually show students doing things, oftentimes with the classroom teacher. Mm -hmm. So a classroom teacher could watch the series and say, "Let's let me look and see what this teacher is doing, or what some of, and what some of the kids are doing." For example, the the program uh, history begins at home in Waynesville, or, or the program pertaining to Mingo Swamp, where you you see actually a teacher doing things with students and students getting involved in activities and. Using that information, the teacher will think of other things that, that uh, he or she could do with students back, back in the classroom. Jim, I know you, you know, in making the series, you were looking for things like this, and you might want to mention a few other specific examples. Right. In, in almost every unit, I think that we've got um, kids from the local area being involved in, in some activity. I know in Hannibal, we had a bunch of uh, young people that were involved in a, in a play. Mm -hmm. In, in almost all of the different units, in, in the Truman unit, there were some, some young people going through the museum up there. And I think the challenge for teachers is is going to be able to uh, kind of tap into the excitement for kids um, about their history. And I think that once you tap into that, you, the teachers will find that there's a tremendous interest in students um, in their own personal history. Um, and Basically, you're just going to have to find the resources in your local area in order to do that. Some areas, some local areas have incredibly rich resources where they are um, really wanting to do outreach work with classroom teachers. Mm -hmm. So uh, depending upon where you are, I know Truman Library, for example, um, they've, they've hired staff that specifically are working, doing things to get, for, get the kids to use the the library resources in very active ways, and I'm sure this is happening in other places as well. well same with Jefferson Memorial, the, yeah. the the Arch and Old Courthouse oh, Complex yeah. in St. Louis. They have a, a tremendous number of educational yeah, that's programs. The, the Historical Society in St. Louis, which has just expanded upon its its museum, mm -hmm. they're just just very very rich resources in the state, and they're 
our local collectors too, uh, mm -hmm. in our the one unit that we do on the uh, St. Louis World's Fair. Sure. We talk with an individual who's made it a life advocation basically to uh, find out as much about that particular event in Missouri history as possible and has collected a lot of artifacts. And I mm -hmm. suppose almost every community has someone that's a, a collector of artifacts. Sure. From a video producer standpoint, the, these people that have spent their life involved in a simple subject, there's nothing they like better than to talk to a group of kids about it. And that, oh, they, sure. they, they live yeah. for that, you know, sure. in, in order to sure. describe their, their passion. Um, they mm -hmm. just love that. I guess with that, uh, we'll end our discussion here about uh, what you as a teacher might be doing with the series. We hope we've, we've given you some good ideas. And we're going to roll some names and addresses on the screen that uh, you can use as uh, background and resource contacts. And also remind you that the teacher's guide that's included in the series that goes out with the tapes uh, has a bibliography. And uh, you can expand on that. We're, we're going to have a website up and running that uh, can be found through the Department of Education homepage, and that will serve as a bulletin board for teachers to exchange ideas. Uh, for right now, this series is being uh, uh, delivered through the Education Satellite Network uh, as a satellite feed, and then we're also going to distribute the tapes to every middle school in the state. So thank you for watching our show today, and we hope you enjoy using the series in the classroom.